those thin wings with their strange elliptical shapes were also absolutely definitive of the Spitfire. Ultra-thin wings were a speed trick Mitchell had perfected in his Schneider races. But why the strange shape? Well, the Air Ministry who were funding Mitchell's prototype wanted a fighter that could climb very fast to intercept enemy aircraft, but also carry machine guns to shoot them down with, up to eight of them. Mitchell and his team worked out by making the wings elliptical, they could reduce the wings' thickness and drag to a minimum, yet still have lots of strength, and room inside for retractable undercarriage and all those machine guns. Making the Spitfire very speedy and packing a massive punch. That strange elliptical shape also worked hand in glove with something else that gave the Spitfire speed. Its heavy new engine. An engine that's become a legend. The Rolls-Royce Merlin. Just like the Rolls-Royce R-Type that had powered Mitchell's seaplane, it's a massively powerful V12 with supercharger technology. But unlike the crazy R-Type, it could run for a lot longer than just a few hours before potentially blowing up. It still needed a lot of cooling, though. Mitchell had solved the mad R-Type's cooling problem in the Schneider racer by literally turning the whole aircraft into a flying radiator. A staggering 50% of the aircraft, the entire upper and lower surfaces of the wings, even the floats had hot water from the engine pumped through them to be cooled by air howling over the aircraft as it sped along. It was enough to keep the R-Type from disintegrating in the little racer. But Mitchell couldn't cover half of a fighter aircraft with radiators as they'd be far too vulnerable to bullets. So he pumped the hot engine water through these scoops hidden under the wings instead. Air rushes into the scoops, cooling the engine's water, then exits out of the back. But here's the really clever bit. Because the air is squeezed in the scoop, it comes out of the back faster than it goes in the front, acting a bit like a ramjet, blasting the Spitfire along, giving it even more speed. Mitchell's prototype Spitfire rolled out for its first flight on the 5th of March, 1936. Well, it truly is a thing of beauty. It looks fast, even though it's just standing still. And, of course, it was fast. The original Mark I did 350 miles an hour. The Air Ministry were delighted by the Spitfire's performance and ordered 310 on the 3rd of June. Fantastic even beat. Nothing could be better. They said I could have a ride, but this wasn't exactly what I had in mind. Human ballast to counter strong tailwinds on a beautifully restored machine's taxiing run. But still, an amazing experience. Tragically, Mitchell died in 1937 and never saw his masterpiece go into service. But thanks to his engineering genius, when World War II started, Britain had a truly world-beating aircraft with which to defend herself. As the 30s came to a close, there were tough times ahead. But thanks to the great changes in mass production, transport and speed technologies which the decade had brought, Britain was much better prepared than she might have been on the road to war.